Okay, now that we've talked about the arteries, it seems only fitting that we would then uh, talk about the veins. But uh, when it comes to the brain, it, it's difficult to talk about the brains without also talking about the um, the meninges and the ventricles. As we'll see in a, in a, in a couple minutes, it's all very interconnected. So uh, let's actually start with the meninges before we then get into the ventricles and then finally the veins. And, and we'll, we'll see, again see why we're, we're doing it in this order. So uh, the meninges is, is really just the dura matter. Dura as in durable. This is the thickest of the meninges, followed by the arachnoid layer. Uh, the, the, you know, and under the arachnoid uh, layer, we have this subarachnoid space. Uh, you know, kind of looks like spider webs, I think, hence the name arachnoid. Um, and this is where the cerebrospinal fluid is actually going to sit most of the time. And then we have the pia matter, which tightly hugs the brain. Um, the arachnoid and the, and the pia together are the lepto meninges. Now, when we do talk about the dura, though, it is important to make a distinction. We have the periostal, also known as cranial dura, and then the, and then the, uh, the, the deeper meningeal layer. Uh, and then there's going to be an important uh, distinction between those two when we're looking at um, uh, divisions of the brain. Um, so uh, one more note on the subarachnoid space. Um, this is where we might administer uh, medications. Uh, we might also extract uh, cerebrospinal fluid from here uh, for analysis. Um, all right, let's watch this amazing video. So periosteal cranial dura, meningeal cranial dura, arachnoid cranial dura, and then the pia not shown. We already saw that. I could have done without that. Oh, well. Um, all right, so notice here we have the uh, cranial dura. Named cranial dura because it tightly hugs the cranium, right? Go around this entire thing. Is there ever a moment where the cranial dura is not touching the skull? No, it's always touching the skull. Now, usually it's also on the other side touching its, its brother, the meningeal dura, right? The meningeal dura right here. However, we have these natural divisions of the brain, completely natural, right? We have a right hemisphere and a left hemisphere. They are distinct. And we also have a cerebellum. And based on that, if we, if we keep in line with the logic that the meningeal dura always hugs the brain and the, uh, the periosteal or cranial dura always hugs the skull, what's going to happen is during these natural divisions, the meningeal dura is going to go this way and the cranial dura is going to go this way. And it's going to create these little pockets. These little pockets are the, uh, the sinuses. Um, this is where we're going to have a lot of our, our venous system basically dump into. This is going to be venous blood. It's just kind of like sitting there. It's not really directional flow, which is kind of weird. Um, uh, now, during these separations, this little area here uh, is actually shown a little bit more closely here. These are known as um, cerebelli or, or cerebri. But this is where you know we're seeing the, uh, the pia matter and the arachnoid ma matter and the meningeal dura all sort of coming together again completely natural division of the brain. Um, and uh, the, the cere we, we mentioned this subarachnoid space contains cerebral spinal fluid. Uh, its purpose is to feed the tissue, to remo remove waste from the tissue, and to cushion the very delicate brain. Um, uh, I would also note that the subarachnoid space containing the cerebral spinal fluid ultimately is going to dump in to these sinuses. A lot of things are going to just dump into these sinuses. So um, they're going to dump in through these little holes called arachnoid uh, granulations, which we can see a little bit better right here, right? So they kind of look like these little alveoli. So here's my little spider web. So that must be the subarachnoid space with all the cerebral spinal fluid. It's going to come in here and we can actually kind of see it a little bit better over here, right? It's going to come in here and the cerebral spinal fluid is just going to leak out into this little cavity, this natural cavity, which is a sinus, which is a natural consequence of the separation of cranial and um, uh, perios sorry, cranial and meningeal dura. Um, so the, the CSF is going to go here and then it, it's ultimately going to be dumped out, which we'll get to. Um, so going back to the natural divisions of the brain. So, um, you know, we said the cerebelli and the, the um, uh, cerebri and, you know, it's called tentorium. But this is this is just the natural, right? If we think about this, this is where your right hemisphere of your brain would go. And the other side is going to be the left hemisphere of the brain. They're separate things. And because they're separate, um, we and we have some uh, meningeal layers that tightly hug each of them. We get this natural Falk's cerebri, uh, dura matter. Um, there's technically also going to be uh, pia matter and and uh, arachnoid, but the, the main thing is probably the the dura matter in here. Um, and then we have the tentorium cerebelli down here. So this separates the left and, and right side of the brain, and this is going to be separating the. Um, you know, this is the supertentorial, infratentorial, um, in other words, like the brainstem and the cerebellum from the, uh, the basal ganglia, limbic system, uh, cortex, et cetera, the cerebrum.
Um, so again, just in case you're, uh, you know, uh, in the small chance you're not sick of it, let's look at this again. So a um, couple different ways this can cut. Falx cerebra right there, tentorum cerebelli right there, and then the falx cerebelli right there. So these natural divisions of the brain, this is just the separation of our two dura layers. Um, again, you have this, it's named after like falx is like a sickle and it kind of looks like a sickle a little bit. I kind of buy it. This is the little sickle. Um, so, okay, everything is ultimately going to be dumping in to this dural system. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at these. So we're, we're highlighting the falx cerebra right here, and now we're transitioning to superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus right next to the corpus callosum, transverse because moving the transverse direction, sigmoid because it's uh, sigmoid on its curving, cavernous sinus is important, and it all dumps into the internal jugular vein. That's how... Um, we're kind of getting rid of everything, right? The veins dump into the sinuses. The CSF dumps into the sinuses. The sinuses eventually are going to dump into the internal jugular vein, which takes it away to the rest of the body. Um, cavernous sinuses, very important. So it's going to contain a lot of really important structures. A lot of uh, structures related to innervation of the eye. The cranial nerve three, cranial nerve four, cranial nerve... Um, so the, the, the ones I highlighted are the ones that are kind of odd. This one is odd because it's out of order, right? This should be three, four... Um, V1 and V2. That order makes sense. So this is out of order, um, the abducens. Um, but it is still there. You need to know. Um, now, uh, the next point is that uh, this is kind of out because this is eyes, this is eyes, this is eyes, this is eyes, and this is not eyes. That's like the sensation of my nose. So um, I don't know. That, for me, I just, I, I kind of remember you know, everything goes in order and everything has to do with the eyes except for those two exceptions. And that kind of helps me. Remember that we also have this weird trajectory of the internal carotid, which makes its way through the cavernous sinus. Um, uh, and, and then right in between the cavernous sinus. Um, so here's our cavernous, uh, you know, here's our cavernous sinus and here's our cavernous sinus and then they're interconnected like right here. And so they are, so this is the cavernous sinus of one side, this is the cavernous sinus of uh, the other side. And again, right in the middle here, we have our pituitary. Um, so, and then above that is of course gonna be the optic chiasm. Um, so the ventricular systems of the brain kind of looks like a ram, uh, lateral ventricles one and two. Um, then we're going to have the third ventricle and then the fourth ventricle down here. Um, connecting them is going to be the um, in, uh, interventricular foramen, also known as the foramen of Monroe, and then connecting uh, the third and, and fourth, kind of behind this, deep to that structure, is going to be um, the uh, sylvian uh, aqueduct, also known as the mesenphalic aqueduct. Um, so within the ventricles, we have these the choroid plexus, which contains uh, ep ependymal cells, um, which generate the cerebrospinal fluid. Um, and so uh, if we follow this again, we're going to have, we're highlighting right now ventricles, uh, the, the left lateral ventricle, so one or two, order doesn't matter. And it is going to go via the interventricular foramen of Monroe to the third ventricle, which goes through the cerebral aqueduct or the aqueduct of Sylvius to the fourth ventricle, which goes to the uh, lateral, which goes to the median aperture. Note that the lateral aperture is the Lushka, I think of L for L, and then the median aperture, a median for Magandhi. Um, and, oh, and, so, and where does all of this uh, go? You know, it's, it's going to go to the subarachnoid layer and the cerebrospinal fluid and it's ultimately then going to dump back into the venous sinuses. Um, so this is just a great picture kind of overlaying uh, the, the flow of the, the cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so the, uh, the venous sinuses don't actually have directional flow, um, and uh, unlike the veins, which, which do have directional flow. Um, uh, and then again, their job is to collect CSF, but also they're collecting all of the stuff from the veins. We have a picture. Is there a picture? Here my throat. Nope, oh, there we go. I ruined it. All right, let's, can I go back? There we go. Okay, get ready for the picture now. Boom, all the veins drain into that. Uh, into the sinus, and then the sinus itself is eventually going to drain into the jugular. Um, and the emissary veins, uh, I think of like emissary is like you're taking a, an important message from like one nation to another, and this is going from outside of the skull to uh, uh, beneath the skull. So that's that's quite a you know uh, that it's it's quite a quite a mission. It's quite a long journey. It's quite different landscapes and geographies if you think about it. Um, if you get a cut to your head though, uh, this could be quite bad because infectious agents could travel through the emissary veins and get into the skull where they can then feast on the brain, and that's not good for you. Um, and here's a silly video. Yeah. So again, it's it's draining from from the scalp through the skull, and it also is going to dump into the sinuses. Um, poor sinuses, they're taking everyone's garbage. Um, 
We then have these bridging veins. So the emissary veins go from the, the scalp uh, beneath the skull uh, to the sinuses. These are going from the cortex, um, you know, the actual brain parenchyma, um, through the arachnoid layer, um, through the dural layer, and then into the sinuses. So they are bridging from the brain to the sinuses, hence the name. Um, well, if you get a rupture there, so again, this is our spider web, so this is the subarachnoid layer, it, it typically actually breaks and fills the subdural layer. So we saw the middle meningeal artery off the maxillary artery off of the uh, carotid artery is going to be the epidural. Um, this is going to be a subdural. So it's, it's, a, it's a subdural injury. Um, and you know, we see this in alcoholics and elderly people and, and, and babies.